so what I'm curious is um like I checked your profile like you veto maps is that correct you veto the old maps like Abyssal Reef Odyssey as far as, as far as I know I've I haven't vetoed any maps I know I just thought because you have zero games played on Odyssey and like but I guess it's that's just and check like your win rate is also above fifty percent against every race with Sir. Which I think is really good. I mean, you didn't play that many games, and most were CVC, which I guess you kind of hate. Or what do you think of the CVC matchup? It, um, hmm. I, I'm not really a big fan of the micro-intensive um, early game. Yeah. Games. But beyond that, I'm fine with it. Yeah, beyond that, it, you either get ahead or behind, and then whoever has more roaches wins, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, if you want, um, you can go to the replays and uh, host one replay. Like, just click watch with others, and then you can give me the lead in game. Okay. So I can uh, control the time of the replay. You always go um, hedge first, is that correct? Uh, not anymore. I, uh, for some time I used to. Mm -hmm. But um, recently actually I've been playing a little bit more aggressive. And so I've been going gas or cool first. Okay. Quite a bit in the last, let's say, 20, 30 replays. Is so if you go gas first, you go for Ling Bane pressure or what? Kind of follow up. Um, yes. Well, ideally, I have a problem with uh, determining when to build the baling nest. Yeah. And uh, actually, before that, I have a problem to re really to know when to put my drones back in gas. Yeah. I always take them off at hundred, then I build a um, metabolic boost, and then I have no clue when to put them back. Yeah. That's the right time, you know. Yeah, there is like one time that's right for every matchup, I think. No, CVC not, but for CVT and CVP, you just want to put your drones back into the gas at 3 minutes 30, which is when you should have your main and natural about saturated. Like, usually what you do as Zerg is you saturate both your main and natural on the minerals, and then you put drones back into gas. That is about how it works. You saturate your third as well, and then put it drone? No, gas? after you saturated main and natural. Okay. Can you? Thing. Yeah, thank you. I got holes. Ah. Oh. oh, you left the lobby. Wait, um, I have not. Wait a second. Problem occurred. Okay. I Can you host again? Yeah, like with yeah. Cirque, the big thing that you need is um, a lot of mineral income. Can you give me host? Yeah. Thank you. So, like, the big thing is that you need a lot of mineral income. If you have. Mineral income, you can afford queens, which are like your um, check of all trades, defend against everything, Zerg unit. Like the more queens you have, the easier it will be to defend things. If you have, no matter whether you get attacked by Hellions, Banshees, or uh, Oracles, queens are always there to help defend you. So a lot of players build a lot of queens because they only cost minerals and they don't cost larva. More larva means more drones. More drones means more money. More money means a bigger army faster. So that's kind of how the Zerg economy works. You build queens to defend and then you build drones for the rest. Okay. Yeah, so I'm gonna... let's watch how this plays. So, can you tell me something about this game? Like, do you remember what you played or...? Yeah, uh, I remember that uh, he went... Um, Hellion... Um, Mm -hmm. uh, like mass, yeah, and uh, it started off well. Then I took a bad trade. I attacked in a uh, mass link to his um, element for the yeah. I killed a lot of his work, but then I lost too much, and I had no real good answer to his mass and cyclone. Okay, yeah. 
Yeah, I understand. So it's kind of like a big um, Mac no store port opener. Like with, uh, yeah. yeah. So let's see, you go hatch gas pool, you stop mining. See, what you usually should do is um, move the three drones that you take from the gas immediately to the natural because you don't want to go over 16 drones in the early game in your main base. You, okay. you leave them in your main because of the um, Reaper threat, right? Uh, yes, and it's, yeah, yeah, that and because my hatch wasn't uh, finished. Yeah, earlier. you don't really need to worry about the Reaper so much because you have links in, out in time, you see. I mean, you put the drones down anyways now, so it's fine. The Reaper harassment does a little bit of work, but Reapers are always annoying to deal with. Like, it doesn't really matter if you lose a link or two here. Things are expendable, more or less. Yeah, let's see. So, no inject yet. Injects are very important. And if you check, if you check your um, unit count right now, you're already at four larva. Do you see that? Yeah. You're at four larva. You have both queens done, and you still have 400 mineral, 440 minerals in the bank. Now you're at 500 minerals, and you're at five larva. If you have three larva at a base, no f future further larva gets produced. So, right now, every second that you don't build a unit in your main base you lose a larva. I didn't know that. Yeah, like you cannot go above three larvae. So the important thing with Zerg is that you always constantly produce your things. Like you want to spend your money as soon as you have it. Because not only will your drones be there quicker, you um, will also have more units because you have more larvae in total. So you always want to spend your larva as soon as you can. You inject it and then you build the units now, yeah. That's good. Like, one of the key things with Zerg is to learn how to constantly squeeze in these little macro actions every three seconds that you have. So let's see. Right now, if you check your uh, draw, if you check your um, money, you're at 600 minerals. And I think you will be able to build about six, seven drones, eight drones maybe. But like, you see how your minerals are going up? Yes, uh, they do that every time. I, uh, I mm -hmm. recognize that they do that, the mineral uh, go up, but I don't really know why and how to respond. Do you? Did you look up like build orders on how other people handle that? Uh, no, I don't know how other people handle that. I looked up uh, the build orders some time ago, mm -hmm. but they... Um, to be honest, I forgot what they did after a certain point. Yeah, I see. Which would be after the saturation of, this, of the natural around yeah. the time, I think. Yeah, I can tell because like, you see like your minerals keep going up right now, they keep going higher, you're already at 1000 minerals. And if you check your production tab with D, if you press D, it will open the production tab, it's like empty, right? You're building a hatchery and nothing else. If you press U right now, you see that you have 10 larvae. So you have 10 larvae. No further larvae are produced, you're only spawning larvae from your injects. And you're injecting again, now you're at 16 larvae and you're still not producing anything. Now you're producing again, and now you're building 10 overlords. Right? Yeah. Like 10 overlords are not really going to do anything for you. I'm going to show you, we're going to go through a complete build order after, after this replay quickly, so you can see how, um, how to efficiently macro in the game. But like, you should... Never, never spend all your money on overlords early in the game. It's like, it's a waste of money, you know? Like, you're just wasting 1,000 minerals on overlords that you're go not going to need for the next 5-6 minutes. What you should do is build more drones and get more gas. Like, building more drones is always good with Sir. You build additional queens, which is also good. Queens, drones is always a smart way to spend your money. I mean, you still almost killed this guy, and now you spent your you spent all your money, and you're actually macroing decently. So you're uh, you're building drones at a normal pace. Right now, once again, like you stop producing, you're focusing a lot on the micro, but the micro is not what will win you the game. What will win you the game is good macro. Like it doesn't, you don't need to worry about your links all the time. Like you don't need to send the links in here. Uh, move them around like constantly look at the links what I usually do is I just send links somewhere I see they do damage I go back to macroing 
Then I'm like, oh, are the links still doing damage? I look at the minimap, I see enemy units moving towards the links, I pull the links back home, and I continue in macroing. But I only spent like a couple seconds here and there looking at my army, and the rest of the time I spent macroing. Because you really, really need to get that good macro rolling. It's all about macro if you play Zerg. Like, see, do you see how quickly you're now, um, your drone count is going up? In that minute, you built like 15 drones, you got a lot of gas. You're taking too much gas right now, which is a little bit of a problem in of itself. Like, yeah, you, like, I have no idea when to take how much gas. Yeah, like what you really need is a build order that teaches you how to play the game. We're going to look at that. Like, without a solid build order, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. The thing, what, the thing that a build order does is it shows you how to efficiently get to a certain point in the game. Like the most efficient way to get out a 200-200 link bay in Hydralisk Max with plus 2 plus 2 upgrades for example. There's like build orders that span the entire game from start to finish that you can play every single game. Like That's a, something I just wanted to ask you, how, how long do standard build orders last? And I didn't know that they last the whole game. Yeah, they last the entire game. Like my, like, I have build orders that you can, that start and end, like they go throughout the entire game. Because um, it's just the most efficient way to get to a certain point in the game, you know? Like at some point it will not be like, build this overlord then, build this throne then, but it will be like, Okay, so when the lair is done, get the Baning Nest, get the Hydralisk, then start your plus two plus two upgrades, get a fourth base, get a macro hatchery, build more drones, saturate all the bases, uh, get the additional gas from the fourth hatch. When you have gas from the fourth hatch, build the infestation pit. When the infestation pit is done, get the hive and the spire. When the hive is done, get the greater spire. When the greater spire is done, build, uh, build brood lords, you know. It's like the build order goes through the entire game. But it doesn't t detail you every single step. Like it doesn't say, oh, now at this point in the game, build 10 hydralisks. Because you have to react to what your opponent is doing. But it tells you, it gives you like a general way, a general way to approach the game. So right now you have a lot of Ling Bane Ling. You are ba if banning speed on the way, no upgrades. You crush that. Yeah, I see. Banings are not really good against Cyclones. <laughs> Links are really good against Cyclones, but you also need upgrades. Another thing that you don't get are upgrades. Why is that? Do you like... Uh, is that just something you don't pay attention to or don't focus on? Uh, actually, that's uh, not that usual for me. It's I just forgot. Yep. That's something rather special to this game. It's not something I usually do. But I okay. do remember... Among the last, uh, like let's say, 15 to 20 games, I lost two games, um, particularly because I was behind or forgot upgrades. It's very strange. Mm -hmm. Yeah, upgrades are very important. You always get a Zerg. You always want to get the upgrades before you get the layer. Do I remember correctly that you don't take Carapace upgrades? Um... It depends. Against Bio, if you don't take Carapace upgrades, you're going to die instantly. Against Cyclones, you need Carapace upgrades again. But against Hellbat 4 tank, you don't need Carapace upgrades. <laughs> kind of depends, but usually you should just get the Carapace upgrades. Like, uh, they're, they're very important. I'm not sure, do you know how armor works in this game? Probably not well. Well, Probably not, no. every time you're circling hits a marine, it does a certain amount of damage. I think it's like six or so. Is it six damage? Five damage? I don't. I don't actually know. But if you have plus one armor, the the damage will be reduced by one. If you have plus two armor, the damage will be reduced by two. And if you have plus three armor, the damage will be reduced by three. Now the you need armor when your opponent has units that attack very fast. Like, marines attack really fast, right? So if you get one armor, it reduces their, their DPS by 20%. Like, plus one carapace upgrade means that 20% of the marine damage is gone. Plus two carapace upgrade means that the marines only do 60% of their damage, and if you get a plus three upgrade, they will only do 40% of their damage if they are up unupgraded. 
so you see like the, the the progression is really really fast and like exponential the way it reduces the damage so carapace is for attack speed it's relevant for carapace upgrades carapace upgrades uh, re give you armor like armor upgrades or carapace yeah. In which, uh, which yeah. um, how do you upgrade in general like, uh, if you play Ling, Bane, Hydra, like I do in this game? Um, what upgrades do you take in which order? I just take plus one melee and carapace at the same time, then plus two melee and carapace at the same time, and then uh, then I, like getting the hive takes a while, so then I sometimes just get some missile upgrades in between. So that right now there's a there's an attack of yours. Yeah, attacking planetaries is really hard. Like, you cannot break them with links. Like, all your links are dead. Because uh, they do very little damage. Planetaries have a lot of armor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But you spend. I usually um, attack them with banings. Yeah, banings are one way to kill them. Or, like, a lot of hydras. But you. Up upgraded units also deal a lot of damage to them. Like, upgraded ling, baneling actually works pretty well. Yeah, his cyclones are. What do you do? Yeah. But you, but I what would. What do you do against my cyclone? Uh, Ling Hydra works really well. Like, okay. like Lings are completely fine. It only gets dangerous if they have cyclone and Hellbat. Because um, Hellbats kill Lings really quickly, and then you need Bane Lings to kill the Hellbats and Ling Hydra to kill the cyclones. That's kind of how the matchup works. Like you just need to be. You need to deal with the Hellbat somehow. Some people also like to go for Ravagers against um, Cyclones, but it really depends on the player. Like everybody does it a bit differently. Your unit composition is completely fine here, but you really need upgrades. Like your upgrades are way too late. Yeah, and you're I just built uh, the three evolution chambers yeah. at once because I realized I have no upgrades. Why do you focus so much on the gas? What do you mean? Like you're mining a lot of gas from all the bases, but no minerals, even though you have a lot of gas income, but ah. and I have a lot of gas in the bank, but you don't have minerals. Yeah, it's um, that's because it's hardwired into my brain mm -hmm. that the later the game, the more gas I need, and that's why I, I yeah. didn't really think about it actually. Alien. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah, that's uh, completely right. But the thing is, you have too few drones right now. So, you see the worker count, right? Yeah. yeah. What, what do you think is like a good worker count? I uh, go for 75 if I can. Yeah, 75 is good. If you had 20 more drones on the minerals right now, it would be fine. Usually what I do is I only go for... Um, only go for about three hatcheries worth of gas and then when I want the hive tech I take the fourth gas. But you never really need more than four four gas for the most of the game. Like four gas meaning uh, eight gas eight gas geysers total, you know? Yeah. I never thought of that. Counting the gas geysers, yeah. Yeah, like you you need about three gas uh, six gas geysers if you want to go Ling Bane Hydra. Four gas geysers if you just want to afford your basic upgrades, and then eight, uh, seventh and eight gas geyser if you want to get hive tech out, because that that really costs a lot of gas. But Lingbane Hydra doesn't cost that much gas. Like it does cost some, but you can always build links. You know, like if you have too much minerals and too little gas, you just build more links. Okay, that uh, that means three bases worth of gas until hive tech, and then more. Yeah. Like with Hive Tech you can go for 4, but you also really need, you need at least 70 drones. If you go below 70 in the late game, it's gonna be hard. Yeah. I, Sometimes I don't realize how my drone count drops. Yeah, in the game. you know you can check the drone count at the top yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you need to get... It actually helps a lot. Yeah, you need to get a little bit of a feeling for that. Like you need to be able to check and be like, oh, so... Uh, I feel like I should be able to, ha I should have a bigger army right now, where is my drone count at, you know, you need to, that is something you just kind of need to learn how to check. I can tell you most players go for like 66 drones, which which is um, free base saturation, like you have, 
uh, 22 workers at each base, 16 on the minerals, 6 in the gas, and then that's 22. So you have 22, 44, 66 total, and then you have three bases saturated. And that's a, un a worker count a lot of people feel comfortable with. Would you recommend it? Um, yeah, I recommend it. Okay, so um, I switch from 75 to 66. No, no, I think like 66 is the bare minimum. Like you shouldn't go oh, below okay. that, but 75 is better. I actually go for 80 to 90. Like, but really? I didn't know that. No, no, no. I play I, I, against mech, I go 100 workers sometimes even. <laughs> yeah, but you really need to be able to spend your money, you know? I mean, your unique, the unique composition that you're building is really smart, but it kind of lacks the upgrades a bit. You did get your tinnus plating and things like that. But in the end... Um, like he has way better upgrades than yours and yeah. that just makes it super hard for you to deal with his army because cyclones attack so fast you see like they attack really fast i feel like uh, most of the time in the last uh, i don't know two weeks or three weeks mm -hmm. I've, I've often lost to because of stupid mistakes i made it's weird um just forgetting the upgrades or i thought i built a painting nest and i didn't or I don't know, there is another replay I have prepared where mm -hmm. I know exactly what he's doing. It's a pro We can do it next if you want. Yeah. Then I'll just show you. Yeah, let's quickly look at that replay and then I'm going to show you something that will hopefully fix a lot of your um, problems. Because mm -hmm. I think I got the solution. I mean, it's... Um Easily explained as well. I know I play Protoss. I know exactly what he's doing because he's hiding behind cannons and he's going air. I've played the same guy twice in a row as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, what happened this time was that. Uh, wait, going You're over coaching this guy a little bit. It's a platinum level Zerg. He... I was just uh, not fast enough. Kind of has a problem. kind of has a bad early game, but we're going to deal with that. Um, I I thought okay, he's traveling behind two base. He's going air. Yeah. And I, I thought I have enough time to saturate three bases entirely, and then uh, build hydras. Mm -hmm. But before I could get my first hydras out, he had eight oracles in my base, and it killed me, basically. <laughs> Mass oracles. Yeah, let's see. Yeah. yeah, I think I think your biggest problem is just like the lack of build order, like lack of general direction. Yeah, probably. But uh, that's this game fixable. Hurt me especially because um, not only did I exactly know what he was doing, yeah, and I I felt like I was on a good path, but timing didn't work out for me, and he was BM. So yeah, it was. Like, and he was BM, the worst thing, right? Yeah. 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 I actually love to play against BM guys because they're most vulnerable to BM themselves. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Why did you go gas first here? As I said before, that I don't really have a plan. I, yeah. Like I, I, I know I, like I see this, and the problem is if you go gas before hatch, your hatchery is not done, so you have like, your drones are very impractical, like they're uh, inefficient down there, you know. You so it kind of hinders your income a bit. Then it goes for. Yeah. A, hmm? How do you do that? Um, or what would you recommend when going hatch first and when going? Uh, Always go hatch first. Against CVC as, in CVC as well. Yeah, people go hatch first in CVC. Everybody I play against, either hatch first or they cheese. Would you, you do that? Going hatch first every matchup every time. Yeah. And for some some reason I stopped. Because I thought it was too risky or too greedy. No, it's it's um, completely fine. Uh, especially in CVP, go, not going hatch first is kind of stupid. Because uh, there's not really any threat. The, like, the only thing that is risky is either if he goes for um, a cannon rush or like proxy gateways. Which he might have tried to cannon. I don't know what this guy's doing. It, he like makes no sense either. <laughs> but... um. You, if you don't want to go hatch first, what I suggest is to go pool hatch gas. So you take the gas latest 
and that way you will still have optimal mining. That's the way I do it. Like I go in CVT, I go pool hatch gas and sometimes in CVC as well. It's still 17 pool, 18 hatch, 17 gas. Yeah, it's like a it's like a very easy way, and then I just put one drone after the other in the gas, and it delays my link speed a bit. But most of the time, you don't need that link speed out as quickly as possible, anyways, right? Like it doesn't really matter when you get the link speed. Didn't you say before that you go uh, hedge first in every matchup? Yeah, but in C, I said, and what I meant is like it's okay to go hedge first in every matchup, and there's most players go hedge first in every matchup, but I personally prefer to go. Pool first in CVT. Okay, because um, one reason why I changed it was because I saw that I saw you playing uh, differently, uh, not going head first every time. Yeah. So I thought maybe uh, that's. Yeah. I took it from a player. No, wait. Actually, did it before the player did it. But uh, there is a guy called Dark who goes gas pool hatch every matchup. I think. Like, he does it the same way you do, but he keeps the drones in gas when the when after the link speed and just goes for either overlord speed or bane link nest and does some drop shenaniganry. Yeah. Um, the problem is right now you you realize that you have the twenty drones at your natural, right? We're gonna go back a little bit because I think your macro was pretty solid this game wait right here do you, you see at 3 minutes 30 is when you have your main and natural um, about saturated right mm -hmm. so this is when you would take the three drones that hatched in your main right now and put them to the gas instead like at around 3 minutes 30 is when three drones hatch in your main and then you just send those to the gas if you go pool first. I think the timing is a little bit different if you go um, hatch first, but like it kind of works out either way. Uh, that means that as soon as I've saturated my natural... Put three know, drones into the gas. Uh, how many gases should I take? All of them? No, like just put one, just fill up the gas in your main. Oh, just three? Yeah. And if you, like you expand it, <coughs> you expand it, <coughs> Sorry, <laughs> you expanded really late that ga in this game by stat. Were you scared of something or? Um... I mean the third. Yeah. That was not intentional. I, okay. I expanded. I think I took the third as soon as I realized what he's doing. Mhm. Mm I have no standardized third timing as well. Yeah, you need to get the third out at the very latest at three minutes thirty. You should get it out quicker though. And I think you're gonna take too much gas right now. You need to build more drones. Let's see. Like right now, you if you check your production tab, once again, you're not pre-building drones, do you see? If you check your larva count, you have nine larva, but you're not building drones. Yeah, like you just don't have a, um, you just don't have a build order. That's your biggest problem. Yeah. And then you're mining a lot of gas right now, and what are you going to spend the gas on? Well, I, I remember my um, mindset was, I know he's turtling, he's probably not attacking me, so I build three bases, saturate everything, and take up. That was the idea. Yeah, but like you have 500 gas right now, and you don't have a lair, you don't have an evolution chamber, you don't have a bailing nest. Like you have, you, you take the gas, but you do nothing with it, and then you're like, I better spend the gas so I get Overlord Speed and Bane and Burrow, right? Yeah. Yeah, like you you really need... If you want take gas, you should always know what to spend the gas on. Yeah, I should... I really need a plan. Yeah, so um, that's what a build order provides and we're going to have a look at that soon. Uh, let's just quickly look what this game turns out to be because like right now your lair is not done. At this point in the game, you could already have your hydralisk then done and have hydralisks on the way. Your links also see the probes moving around, right? I'm not sure if you're paying attention, but it's pretty obvious that yeah, something so is going on. Yeah. So you're building links right now and are hopefully gonna crush that base. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, you're building the hydra then, that's good. He is building I I built oracles. Well. Uh the link links are fine, I think. 
Like you have, you should saturate the gases at your third base. You did that. Yeah, definitely a rebus plat. At that point, I was actually pretty happy with yeah. the game so far, but mm -hmm. yeah, then it goes bad really quick. At this point in the game, you could be almost maxed out on hydras. Like if you yeah, if you if you hit your injects and just build the hydra discs, you should have a plus one plus one hydra disc timing about max supply. Yeah. But now, like the reason why the oracles are here and you don't have hydra discs out is just because you forgot to build the hydras. Like you, you had the larva, you had the hydra disc then, but you didn't build the hydras. Like this shouldn't have been an issue. Yeah. Like, once again, the problem is, you build the links and then you just completely forgot about your macro. Like, the links are completely fine here. Like, it's not bad to build the links. But now you lost the Hydra then, you lost your pool, so you cannot build anything. Like, anything to combat the Oracles. And you're in a really bad spot. Like, you have so much money. Yeah. I have to think about my lava much more. Yeah, you always... It's... Yeah. Like, you always want to spend your money. If you watch my stream and check my money, like, of course, when I get harassed, it goes up, usually. But if I just can, if I can just focus a little bit on my macro, like, I will always try to have my minerals underneath 300, at least. Like, as soon as I have 50 minerals, I build a drone. Because the, the 4-5 seconds that I built a drone earlier will give me 4-5 more minerals. If I do that a couple of times, soon I will have an entire drone more than you. And if I play against a player like Snoot, he will be so much faster in macro while harassing that he will have so many more units that I just cannot beat him. But yeah. Like once again, the problem is kind of the your build order. Let's have a quick look at a build order here. I'm going to I'm going to Do you have two monitors or only one? One monitor. One monitor, okay. I think the easiest build order to have a look at is, um, give me one sec. We can have a look at the uh, Lingbane Hydralisk. I'm going to send you a link. I'll send it in Skype. There, can you quickly click it, click on that? I can also put it in the stream chat for you guys. Mm. And did you get it? Yeah, it's loading. Just a second. Yeah. And then just scroll to the very bottom, where it says Analysis. Analysis, okay. Got mm -hmm. it. Yeah, you see it says, at 3 minutes 30 and 32 drones on the mineral, we start mining gas again. Spores are done at 3 minutes 30, third hatchery is finished around 3 minutes 50, three edge saturation is reached around 550, 66 drones. And um, that's kind of the benchmarks you want to hit when you go for a Lingbin Hydralisk uh, build. So if you check the build order above the analysis, like this is a build order that I wrote, so I kind of have things uh, still in my memory. At you, you see the timestamps on the right, right, where it says stop mining gas at until 3 minutes 30, for example, right? Mm -hmm. So this is my basic build order that I play if I'm up against somebody who opens with an oracle and goes into whatever he wants to do afterwards, and I want to play a Lingbane Hydralisk against that. So what I do is I get link speed at 27 supply, then at... 3 minutes 40 around, I build spore crawlers at all my bases, so I'm safe against the oracle. At 3 minutes 30, I put the drones back into the gas, as it says up there. 
And then at around four minutes, I get the plus one melee, um, the evolution chamber, so I can get the plus one melee. Then at four minutes 20, I get the additional gas because I'm approaching mineral saturation on all my free bases. So what I do is I saturate two bases and I take one gas. I saturate all three bases and I take two more gas. I saturate those two gas, I take all gases. That's kind of how I play it. Okay, so you uh, you take gas success um, first one, then two more, and then the rest. Yeah, that's usually how I do it. Because then I can drone up the two gases, and then I can be like, oh, do I need to build some links to defend? Because if I just take all the gases, then I'm like, oh, what do I do now, right? But I will just take the two additional gases, and then I build drones, and I just rally the drones to the gas. Like, I just press D three times, and then I rally the drones to the gas. Do the same again, do the same again. And then I'm like, okay, do I need more units right now? Like, what is my position in the game? I say, like, oh, he has a couple adepts. I better build some bane links and links right now. So I build links and bane links. And then I'm like, okay, I'm safe. Let's take the additional gases. That's kind of how I take my gas. And that's the same. Can I, can I use that build order against all races, all matchups? Um, you can use it kind of against Terran. The Terran build order is a little bit different. I can send it to you quickly. But like the timing is still going to be the same, more or less. I can, can send you a quick link here. I'm going to play it for you in-game and then you can give it a try and I'll have a look and, you can, and I'll give you some pointers. I sent you a link to the Terran build order and if you open that link, tell me when you have it open. I have it open. So do you see the in the middle, underneath the description, here are some standardized timings. It says, like, bet between the oh, description yeah. and VOD. Yeah, yeah, okay, good. So it says, against Terran, I take link speed. I stop mining gas. Then I take the third base at 2 minutes 45, for example. You just want it sometime between 2.45 and 3.30, whenever you can. You just need to get the third base at the very latest at 3 minutes 30, because then it, that is when your link speed is done, or should be. And against Terran, you can kind of play the same way. Like you retake your gas at 3 minutes 30, then you build the two evolution chambers. Against Terran, you build two evolution chambers against Protoss 1. The reason is that upgrades are more important than you really need the carapace upgrade against Terran, against the bio units. Then you build the evolution chambers, you get your Evo, plus one, plus one, then you get your lair, and then against Terran, I usually just take all five gases at the same time, but you can also do the same thing and take two gases and then three more gases. I think that's uh, safer and makes more sense. But you can see like I have these standardized timings and they kind of tell you in what order you want to get your things. Like you want to get the Evos, then you want to upgrade your plus one, plus one. Then with the next one under gas, you get the lair around five minutes 30. When you have your free bases saturated, you take the more you take additional gas. When you have your lair done, you get bane link speed and height and the hydralisk then. And when your hydralisk then is done, you get your hydra speed upgrade. If you want to transition, you get the muscle you get the lurker then and an infestation pit, for example, and then you get a hive and a spire and then a greater spire. So it kind of shows you how to progress through the game and I also have a little guide if you want to watch it sometime later in the video and have like the build order, everything is annotated as well. If you really want to read it or it's like a little bit more of an in-depth analysis, but you can have a look at that another time, like privately if you want. And if you have questions, you can always ask me about it. But does this kind of clear things up a little bit for you? Like timing wise? Yeah, insanely. Good. Yeah. So can you quickly give me the lead in game? Then I will show you like how this progresses. Uh, what do you mean lead in game? Like if you click right click on my portrait, promote to leader at the top right. Yep. Okay. Good. I'm just going to do this quickly. I'm going to put in actually we can invite I'm going to invite this guy so you can kind of see how it plays out because this is going to be a very standard game. So I will, you play? I'm going to show you 
how I execute execute a normal free uh, free hatch opener, and then I will let you execute the same. That will not work at all. No, it's uh, yeah, but it's Me executing it. I have, yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. It's it's going to be fine. I will help you, and I just want you to watch and see how I progress through the game, and then you're gonna try the same. Because it's really easy. Like I'm going to comment everything, like every step of the way. And you won't, I'm just, I just invited him to so have like something to look at, like to so actually see what it looks and feels like in a real game. But you obviously don't have to build, play the build as ref refined as I do, so you can beat a player like him. So would you prefer to see a pool first version or a hatch first version? Okay, I'll play the hatch first version. So, I always built the overload at 13, I think you do the same, it's just a little bit more efficient. I told him to play the 16 marine drop, so I know what what will come my way. 16 marine drop is like the most common opener, that's just a really hard timing, that is pretty easy to defend as well. So, so how can I your... Uh, you have to press 1 and C, I think. Oh, or yeah. then I always built the hatchery at 18. I think 17 is more efficient, but I don't know. You just have to build it at something. I, the early game timings like that don't really matter that much. And what's gonna be really important is like the macro in the in the mid game. Yeah, Rebus Black. The drop will hit me around five minutes ten. Around five minutes ten, I have to. I need to have about seven queens, like thir twenty links, and I need to have my bases saturated. That it, those are going to be my timings. And here you see how I usually handle the gas, um, the gas issues in the early game. I just put one drone into the gas after the other, because that really allows me to get the most mineral count, um, a big mineral count as quickly as I can. Yeah, I built the drone and I rally it to the gas, that's how I usually do it. But you can do it, like, you can just take drones from the mineral as well. Then I build an additional overlord. Then we built the four links, right? You want to have four links to deal with the reaper. And at 100 gas, I'll remove the drones from the gas. Return cargo. And I set both rally points to my natural. I have four links that just need to be a little bit defensive against the Reaper. And I can already try... Ah, uh, there, there he comes. I have to deal with the Reaper here. I can try to um, send a drone over there to the third base. Get the third base done. He, he appears to be shutting it down, which is okay. Then I just built two additional queens. Like, building additional queens is always good. I'm gonna do a quick extractor trick because I have some supply block. Build an overlord. I'm just going to take this third base because it's blocking the other. And while this is going on, if you look at my money, like I'm always trying really hard to spend my money as good as I possibly can. You are at four queens then, right? Sorry, what? You are at four queens as soon as the Yeah, is exactly. So I can use two queens to spawn a little bit of creep. Um, the new queens I always use to inject. And right now, at 3 minutes 30, three drones pop in my main and I just send them to the gas. And then the additional drones will almost fill up the natural, as you can see. And then, I always, you always need to be a little bit careful with your overlords. A good thing is that you... A good way to handle overlords in the game is that you always build an overlord for every larva cycle, like for every inject you build one overlord. I think that's how most people play it, like, because you need a lot of overlords in the early game as you get supply blocked a little bit like I do. But it doesn't really matter, I see a lot of marines at his base over there and I'm still only droning. Gonna send my drones over there. And 
Then at 4 minutes 50 about, I need to build the evolution chambers. That's the next timing that I need to have in mind. And you can see I already have my bases saturated. Like see, I have all bases saturated on the minerals at 4 minutes 30. Now I can take um, the two evolution chambers. And I need to prepare myself for the drop. His drop is leaving his space about now. This is when he should leave the drop, leave his space. I'm going to build one more hatchery just so I can spend my money. And then when the evolution chambers are done, I'm going to start my plus one plus one upgrades. That's kind of the way I play this. And I use the queens to defend, like the four queens. You can pull all queens, but I mostly use four queens. This is like a very, this is the very basic CVT opener. So there is the, there is, there comes a drop. So I have to deal with that a bit here. And then he has to run away. Yeah, I stay on one gas for a long time. But I don't really need more gas, like more gas wouldn't really do much for me right now. I got my upgrades and I got my lair on time and then I take the additional gas. Like once I have my base is saturated. Yeah, the baning nest is what you, is built around the time you start your lair because banings are useless in the early game against Terran. Marines are way too strong that so that your banings won't actually matter. He's probably dropping me in my main right now, so I have to go and deal with that for a sec. Yeah, see, there he goes. Yeah. And then you also need to build a macro actually usually. Like my money goes a little bit high, but it will start to deplete soon once I actually have units that I can spend my money on. I killed one queen, so I'm gonna build a new one. Oops. And I'm just macroing right now. See the lair is done, the baning nest is done, so I start my baning speed upgrade. And baning speed is the thing that you need so you can actually kill marines in this matchup. Without baning speed, your banings will never hit your opponent. And then I'm at 70 drones, so now I can just start building units. I'm going to build another batch of overlords, getting overlord speed because I feel like it might be useful. Getting a couple um, overlords. Hydra is then is done, I start my plus 2 plus 2, start the Hydra speed and now all my money is gone on units. Now I can just build units. <laughs> He's so annoying. Yeah, I sometimes get a bit harassed like this, but it doesn't really matter. Like I don't really pay much attention to what's going on, I just kind of move my units around here and there and defend everything. You do that with a minimap only or? Yeah, I just click on the minimap where the units are. I don't e if you look at my camera, I don't even look at most of the harassment. I just kind of macro, like I'm always just focusing on macroing. It's not bad if you look at it, like it, it can actually be really good. And then, at 8 minutes 30, I'm already at like 150 supply Lingbane Hydra. And I'm ready to go kill him. And this is kind of how you play a um, basic macro opener. Yeah, I'm playing Flash right now. And you're going to see, like, it's not even going to be close. Like, he's just going to get... Like, this is his army. And then you look at, you compare his army to mine and like, I don't even need banelings to kill him here. And this is just the power of good macro. And I mean he tried hard, but in the end, this is kind of how you play a basic macro opener. So I'm going to go over it a little bit again for you. 
So I started hatch first, right? When my first two queens were done, I injected and built two additional queens. Then I took the third base as soon as I could. At 3 minutes 30, I put drones back into the gas after I got the link speed with the first 100 gas. A little bit before 5 minutes, two evolution chambers. So I can start my plus one plus one. When my hatcheries were all done, I built another batch of queens. Put them all down to my third base so I can defend against the drop because I knew it was coming. And then when I had the drop defended, I took all the additional gas. I got the lair. I got the baning nest. When lair was done, hydralisk, then baning speed plus two plus two. And then I just built units and killed him. That is kind of how you play CVT. That's literally what most CVT is. It's exactly, if you watch a pro CVT, it will be exactly this over and over again. Does that answer? It easy, well, it, it really is easy. It's like the game isn't as complex as people think. Like it's usually it's the same thing over and over again. So what I want is uh, and I mean, we played it against a real opponent, right? You could see that he was trying with all his multi-pronged attacks, but like, it doesn't matter. Like, all I did was F2A move. <laughs> now, I want to see how you try to macro up. So I'm, we're going to do this, and I'm going to give you some pointers just so you get a feeling for the economy. Like, the goal is just that you will understand what it's like to have units. Okay. Because you really need to have a feeling for the for a build order. I suggest that you really have a look at maybe the videos I made or read the build order a little bit more, the ones I sent you. I have a lot of build orders on that site, by the way, if you click on my name on the spawning tool site. And then you just try to get a feeling for what it looks like. You, you will not hit my timings. You will maybe max out like two minutes later. But you will max out eventually and it will... Um, Every time you play the build order, it will help you become a better player little by little. Because that's how I got better. Like, I just... I was like, okay, so how do these players hold these timings? I was like, okay, they max out so quickly. How is that possible? And then I just played it over and over again until I got the mechanics down. I copied every step of the way of Hydra back in the day. Like, I just looked at Hydra and I just copied... Um, every macro cycle that he did. I was like, so he builds the Overlord 10. Okay, I'm going to copy that. That's kind of what I did. That's how you become a Master League player. Where do you put your second Overlord? Um, the second Overlord, I usually send it directly northward because that's where you could have a proxy. You know, the second Overlord is usually for proxy scouting and then I send it towards his main. Like, I... You, you, it depends on the map, but you kind of want to see where his proxies are. <laughs> yeah. So Digitals asks, what if his multi-prong attack hits as you're moving across the map? I just I usually hotkey the units that I'm attacking with. Uh, put them, I press F2, Control 1, then have all my army on 1. And then I just use that army to attack and then the rest of the units that I have at home, including all my queens I use for defense. Like I put all the queens at the third base, I put the rally point of all my units in the main and then have the main and third base defended and then I send a couple units to the fourth base and then have all my bases defended while I'm attacking with my big army. That's kind of how I do it. But that's a little bit more that's a little bit more advanced than like first you have to you really need to get the basics and like you cannot start with how do I defend multi pronged attacks, right? First you want to ask yourself, well, how how do I even do anything in this game, right? How do I even get to a point where multi pronged attacks could hurt me? Yeah? Where do you send your overloads in general? Because Varies, uh, what I think varies very much. Um, first of all, build drones, build drones, and you need to, yeah, good. See, you already had four larva piled up because you were a little bit slow there. Always want to build the drones on time. Um, I, I only really sent the first two overlords out, and I just put, you can put them like where you think drops are coming or something, but that, they're not that important. Like, good overlord spread to see drops and attacks could be good. You want to take your third base as well. Take it quickly. 
and build over see now you're seeing now you're feeling the supply block you want to take a third base send a drone there already like you can just send the drone there and when it's there you build the third good the, you can take either the one north or the one to the to the west yeah See now, because your supply blocked, you're at eight larva. So it's a, like it's another thing that you need to learn is when do I need to build the overlords? And it's gonna be a little bit different every game, because you sometimes you lose some links, sometimes you don't. But it's really important that you learn how to deal with the supply blocks. So right now is when you want to put drones back into the gas in the main, right? You should have your bases saturated. Yeah, there we go. Now you just take the three drones. Put them in the gas. And then you just keep droning, 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 droning. It's okay if you want to build a couple of links here and there, be aggressive, scout a little, like that's completely fine. But what's what's important is that you don't forget to drone while you're doing that. Like you can be like, okay, I want to build eight links right now and be like, oh, I want to what, take the watchtowers, I want to attack his natural. It's completely fine, but it's very important that you keep droning. Good. And then, you just take the, uh, the leftover drones from the third bay, uh, natural and send them to the third. And then you set the rally point to the third and start injecting. You always want, and as your third finishes, you want to build an additional round of queens. Queens. Yeah, just build three more queens and then you can use all the queens that you have right now can be used for creep spreading or defending. That's kind of how you get a healthy queen count. And right now you want to build two evolution chambers. And do you see like, do you see, do you feel the economy? Like, you already have all your bases saturated at five minutes. Now you can build two evolution chambers, then you can get the lair, when you have the plus one plus one started. You can take additional gas already. Usually you need to build uh, some links around this time to defend when you have your third base saturated, so don't forget that. Like, most of the time it's okay to saturate three bases, but then you need to build units. Then an attack is gonna come. Like, that's usually how Zerg works. Then you can start your... Queens. Yeah, then you can start your upgrades. Yeah, you saw how many queens I used last game. I sometimes go up to 10 queens. I, like, if... People teach newer players, they always say, like, just build queens, because queens are very useful. Okay. Yeah, the 2 on one would have hit already Flash, but he's like, like he's, not, he's not at the level yet where, he, yet, yet where he can defend a proper 2 on one like, he, like, we're still trying to teach him the economy, you know? You want to put drones into the gas, you can start your lair already. Then the baneling nest, like you always, as soon as you have your 100 gas ready, you want to start the lair. When you have 50 gas ready again, you want to start the baneling nest, like always on time. And then you see like you have a lot of money, right? Yeah. So what I usually do is, when I have my bases saturated, I also take a fourth hatch and a macro hatch. Because you really need to be able to spend the minerals and you're going to need the, the, the money anyways, uh, the larva anyways. So as soon as I have the 48 drones or 52 or whatever and have my bases saturated, I start building units and I build two hatcheries. Then I have my money spent and then I can always flood a lot of links. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, just like that. And then you wait until the lair is done. Always have a look at your drone count. It's like, is it okay? You did get the missile upgrade. Usually you want the carapace against Terran. Don't forget that. As next or? Um, or the 2-2 two -two first? I would just go 2-2. Two -two. I would get the uh, Hydra then and the Baning Speed now. Baning Speed is the most important upgrade for you. The, up, the reason why banings work in the game at all is baning speed. Without baning speed, unit is useless. Yeah. 
Exactly. And then you wait, and when the Hydralisk then is done, you just pump Hydralisks. And you're going to be maxed before 10 minutes easily. Do you have a ratio usually you uh, use? Uh, Baneling circling? Mm -hmm. So Baneling circling is about one Baneling per uh, three links or one Baneling per two links even. Like one to three, one to two, one to four, kind of depends. If I have if I have a little little gas, I go for like one banding in four links. If I have a lot of gas, one banding in three links. That's I just uh, estimate, but you don't need to be that precise. You really want to build the hydralisk now, and you're going to see like your your supply will just skyrocket. And suspend your larva on the hydra. And in terms of Hydras, especially against Terran, you always want to have around 16 to 24 Hydras. That's like a good number. You have to imagine the Hydralisk is like a Mutalisk. Your main army is Ling Baneling, and then your supportive army is the Hydralisk. So you want a couple Hydras and a lot of Ling Bane. And then the Hydralisk should never die, so you always just rebuild Ling Baneling, and your Hydralisk always stays the same. That's kind of how the matchup works. But it doesn't like if you just want to build forty hydras, it's fine. Like it's not it's not efficient, but it's not gonna lose you the game usually. What now? Mm. I feel like uh, I've all base bases saturated. Well, usually you don't even need to saturate the fourth base because your main base will start mining out, but. What you do then is you can get the hive, like you can just build an infestation pit and get the hive. And like you want to keep expanding, if you can just take a fifth base, take a sixth base, like just keep expanding. But you don't need to take all the new gas all the time. Like see if you saturate all your bases, you're at 80 drones, which is like the go-to mark for me personally. I'm at 82 right now. Yeah, exactly. You can take you and you should just keep expanding. I like keep expanding. So because if you lose your fourth hatchery right now, you'll have 22 drones that do nothing. But if you keep and you don't always need to take the gas immediately if you expand. Like the gas is not a high priority. What you need is the hatchery so you have the larva so you can build units. And I mean by now usually if you if you could execute it this way in every game, you would mostly just roll over your opponents. Because you can max out at like 9 minutes like this. It's when do you take Overlord Speed and Borrow? Um, I got Overlord Speed as soon as I had my Lair done, almost. But, like you, you it kind of depends. Like you can just get it when you feel you need it. If you're up against Widow Mines, you should get the upgrade. If you don't play against Widow Mines, it's not that important. But with the mines and TTs, you almost always want the Overlord speed upgrade. With the mines and TTs, and we take Overlord speed. Yeah. So not scouting related. No, it's not really scouting related. And I mean, you can also get it if you want to spread your Overlords on the map or things like that. But yeah. That's something I don't know as well. Some players, well, I heard that before, they send an Overlord into the enemy's base at a certain time. Mm -hmm. by no idea when to do that or that yeah you would do that around four minutes four minutes 30. you just like you can okay. you have to kind of experiment it with it a little bit yourself maybe like it always depends i usually just scout with my first two links against terran and then i'm like does he build a factory yes he builds a factory okay against factory i go and um play this way and then I'm like okay he just goes Straight to barracks. I know it's going to be that 16 marine drop timing. How do you improve your mechanics, Flash? Flash, if you want to improve your mechanics, the only way to do that is with practice. You really have to practice your mechanics deliberately. Sit there, play against the computer and just play the same build order over and over again. Play against the computer, like he is doing right now. Play against the computer and Try to get a feeling. Be like, okay, 
So even though I play against a computer, I still have this much over minerals. What do I do with that? Then you go and look at what pros and he, you're like, okay. So the pro player has this much money. And what he does with it is, is he builds an additional queen or he builds an additional barracks or he builds an additional command center. And then you're like, okay, I'm going to try and incorporate that in my style. And then you play with that in a, against a real opponent and you're like, okay, against this guy, I could not afford that. That's good to know. But at least in practice, if I played it perfectly, I could afford it. That's kind of how, how you improve. Build queens for every new base you build, even in late game? No, I, I use about three or four queens for injecting nevermore. Like you don't need that much, you don't need that much larva, like especially in the late game when you have all the hatcheries anyways. Like you have so much larva at some of your hatcheries, which is really good, like it's important to keep the injects rolling. But you do, it's not like you need that, uh, like you need more and more larva. But yeah. That was very interesting. Very helpful. Very helpful. I would like. I would just look at the build order. Maybe if you want like a little bit of a more detailed explanation, look at the video. Like I may always make a guide video to each of the build orders, where I kind of go over the timings and I showcase them against a real opponent, like not against Flash. Sorry, Flash. <laughs> against like a grandmaster opponent where I talk about uh, this is how it worked. This is an example game. For example, in this game, he built six adepts early on and then I adjusted the build order a little bit. Like always, always sh I also always show the, the little adjustments that I make. And I'm going to send you a link. This is where you can find all my build orders and they're all pretty detailed. Like for example, the free roach opener, where I show exactly how you open with free roaches, how you transition with them. I talked through everything. I write really long guides about it, and yeah, I don't know. I think I need um, to practice one build for every matchup. Exactly. I so uh, maybe not too many builds as well yeah. uh, at first. I would just play this build for. Protoss and Terran. Like you can play, it's pretty much the same thing against Protoss. The difference against Protoss is that you don't really need that many queens. So against Protoss you instead focus more on um, getting a couple links out here and there, building the spore crawlers which you don't really need against marines. Like against marine medivac you don't need to build the spores, right? But against banshees you would need to build the spores, so you need to find a way to say Okay, this is a build that could have a banshee. This is a build that doesn't have a banshee, you know? Like, you need to find a way that you can kind of read that. And the way I do that is, if I see Hellions, I do one thing. If I see Marines, I do another. If I see Hellions, I build Spore Crawlers. If I see Marines, I don't build Spore Crawlers. That's how I do it. And you're going to see the Hellion, the Queens will defend Hellions, they defend the Marine Drop, they defend everything. You just have to build links as soon as you have your free bases saturated. Then you just spam links until you have when defended. Yeah. Sorry? Yeah. When do you use static defense? Um, almost never. You only need Spore Crawlers. You only need Spore Crawlers against Banshees and Oracles. In the early game. Yeah. Or in general. Yeah, in the early game. And against DTs you need spore crawlers, but those are like all very simple things. You can build spine crawlers against Talions, like one spine in case he morphs Hellbats if you want some added defense, but they're not that important. You can do without spines, but if you have too much money, you might as well build one. Or if you want to defend against drops in the late game, you can just build a spine crawler per base so you have a little bit more time to react. But one spine crawler will not stop a drop. Yeah, usually I build late game one spine, one spore. Yeah. Because I feel like um, as soon as I shut down the medivac, um, I'm good. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah, fine. And awesome. and I've, like as I said, the build orders. If you have a look at them against the protest and uh, the protest and the Zerg, uh, the protest and the Terran link bane hydra, almost the same. Like 90% the same, small differences, but the same end goal. Saturate all bases, 
get the upgrades building Bane Hydra. Pretty much the same. In all matchups. Well, I can Cirque. Cirque CVC is weird. You cannot play CVC like that. Like CVC, there is. I'm working on a CVC build right now that will. Um, that will that should fix a lot of the matchup. But I, like, there's no really. There's no. There's no way to play CVC safe. Um, okay. I can. But in general, Ling Bane Hydra is valid in, in CVC, right? No, because Banings kill other Banings. Ling Bane Hydra doesn't work in CVC because uh, Banings are too good against Ling Banes and Hydras. Like, he will just build 40 Banings and kill your entire army and then have 20 or 30 Roaches left over. <laughs> so it, it doesn't really... Like, if you want to learn how to play CVC, I would really start with... Um, I'm gonna send you something. Like, Pig, I'm not sure if you know Pig, right? Yeah. Yeah, like I'm gonna send you some links. Pig has, has made a CVC guide that like slowly helps you through, through each stage of the game where he talks about, so this is how you open with Ling Bane Ling, then um, this is how you get to the Roach stage and you really have to play you really have to master every stage because it doesn't matter if you can play roaches if the other guy just attacks you with Ling Baning, you're dead, you know? Like, you really need to... You need to start with Ling Baning, then you slowly get to roaches and so on. There are ways to cheese that. Like, I, I made some build orders where, for example, you get a fast... fast lair into Roach Warren, defend wall off with Roach Warren evolution chambers. But it's like, it's all risky, you know? Like there is no one hundred percent safe way to play this matchup. So that's the reason I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, I don't like it either. It's like, but you, you can also if you're a bad, if you're a good player with good micro, you will also win most of the games. The the problem is I don't really aim for that. I don't want to be a high APM micro yeah. player. I'm just. Yeah, yeah that's the but same yeah. problem I have. I, like, I try, trust me, I try everything. I try two base lurker openings, two base roach openings, two base roach pain openings without link. I try everything. It doesn't work. <laughs> like, it, it, you're just gambling. You know, because if your opponent is like, okay, or you're playing greedy, I'm just gonna throw up, throw up three bases and then build my sling roach and you're dead. And you're like, okay, I guess it doesn't matter what I do if you just don't have to build units. Like, that's a problem. But yeah. Is there anything else you would like to know? Like, I, I, I really cannot give you a build order for CVC, one build order that you can play and win every game with. I suggest that you try the build orders that Pick uses, because that's kind of the standard in the matchup and that's that is what will get you far but there's no okay. cheese, cheesy way around it sure i think uh let's postpone every other i mean i've in in a lot of questions left but let's uh, yeah i mean if you have for the yeah. next session, I guess. sure um, especially the the coaching while playing is actually really cool so uh, i think i want to do that again yeah sure of course. I hope it also helped you that I showed you a little bit how like it's it's always hard for me because I don't want to just play the game and make you watch, but I also think it's important that you see what it actually is supposed to look like, you know? Like when I show yeah. you a real game. No, it was both um, you playing, me observing and we are talking at the same time was helpful as well. Good. So yeah. So I suggest that you play some games, come to me again with your new questions about the build order, ask me why didn't this work or whatever problem may arise and then we're going to have a look at it. You can also always watch the replay, I mean the replay should be saved of the game I played against um, Flash so you can also always have a look at that replay. You can also download all my replays if you want, you know I have replay links for every replay. So if you need anything you can always hit me up. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks so much. Yeah. No problem, dude. So, see you again soon. If you have any, if you have need anything, just message me. Okay. I will. I will. Thank you. Good.